their enough energy and strength because this will be a, a, a long battle ahead of us. Much difficult than we earlier thought of. Unfortunately, we have a president whose position we have known before and whose position he is clearly showing right now. On one hand, we pray for him. We pray for the people around him. On the other hand, we have to mobilize as a people. What we have declared as a ceasefire, let me clarify it, it does not mean compromising our stand. It does not mean that our silence for the moment is an approval of what they are doing. But providentially, as uh, the good uh, Dr. Bernie Villegas pointed out, in this lull moment, you have this golden opportunity to speak as a church member. The church is composed not only of bishops and priests. You belong to the church. And you have to speak on behalf of the church. As someone who is part of the church being attacked right now. And we have to defend her. This is our mother. This is the church. But providentially, as I wish to continue on, during the last Senate hearing on the budget of health, Secretary Ona admitted, I think it was carried live by ANC, that the Department of Health is allocating this year 400 million pesos for contraceptive procurement. Senator Enrile questioned it, and he even asked Secretary Ona, do you know how much a condom costs? And the good secretary said, I don't know because I don't use it. Well, thankfully, he does not. But the point is 400 million pesos. Contraceptives alone. Another good senator, Tito Soto, said he could not approve of that. In fact, the Senate President, Juan Ponce and really was saying, we have to cut, to slash that budgetary provision. One, because he says, it is tantamount to approving the RH bill. And secondly, by God's grace, he said, it is against my faith. And to think, he became a born-again Christian after the EDSA revolution. This is the grace of God. Battle lines have now been drawn. You have seen the Damaso. You have seen all sorts of things right now. We are not afraid of that. Our bishops and our priests are not afraid of that. The church has seen wars. The church has been martyred when we were when the church was born. We're not afraid of that. We're not even afraid that we will be less in number. Many are threatening the church right now. If the church wants civil disobedience, like man says, they would advocate for religious defiance. Lagman himself is a Catholic, and so he says. He goes to Mass every Sunday, believe it or not. It is better that we have a purified, strong Catholic Church, probably less in numbers, than with a church with so a multitude of members, but they do not know why they belong to the church in the first place. We learn from you, from this community. Better to be divided, but restored. Better to be less in number, but full of conviction, rather than we are so many. 
but so weak in our conviction. The battle, the battle lines have been drawn. Either we are for the church or we are not. Either we are for Christ or we are not. Either we are truly consecrated to Our Lady or we are not. Either we are for the gospel of life or we are not. This is not a mere battle of words. This is not a battle between dogma and science. Never was, never will be. This is a battle of the Filipino people. In the last coalition meeting that we had, we had Muslim representatives. Last Monday, believe it or not, another group is working. They have made a coalition of evangelical pastors. And they were so angry that one even said, could, could it not be clearer that even a one-day-old baby, just a fetus, is already a person? And to kill that one-day-old fetus or embryo is already killing a person. And they are with us. I have just received a text message right now. A small group, but very strong in their conviction. The Society of St. Pius X. They are, these are the people who are promoters and, uh, of the Tridentine Mass. They are assuring us they are one with the church in defending this, the family and life. And so from all the charisms of the church... We are being gathered by the Lord. I mean, this is true. Huh? And so we pray, what can we do? What can you do? The knowledge that you, have, you already have, share it with others. Organized fora, echo the truth. And this early, I, I, I hope this will not be aired before the supposed dialogue. We, you pray for the dialogue. It will, that there will be a dialogue. May it be genuine and true. Please pray for that. But be prepared. Be prepared. Christ needs His army now. Time will come. Very soon when we have to show the strength of those who are convinced of this Christian truth. Time will come very soon that if need be, we have to go back to the streets again. Not to rally against a person, but to rally behind the truth of the gospel. Not to put down a government, but to place up the gospel of life. And so we beg you, during these days, providentially, it is now the month of the Holy Rosary. Do you remember the battle of Lepanto in the, in the 16th century? The Christian armada was overwhelmed by the Turkish army. But the Pope asked the whole world to pray the rosary. And Christendom won. Our Lady will not abandon us in this battle. We have to ask for that miracle. We ask you to pray for that. And we ask you to remain steadfast. There will be more confusions. There will be more deceits. Arm yourselves with the gospel and with the truth of the church teaching. And so we, we thank you ever so much. This church has been a witness to the rebirth and the restoration of our community. May this church be a witness this evening that indeed 
CFC FFL would stand 